Hey gang, I am at a place called Burton's Bridge, which is along the, the Fox River here. And I'm driving by, it's a dead end street off a of farm. And I think this is the house, well, I don't know if it's the original house, but I believe this is the, the house where Beth Ann Bosworth was killed. May have been this house here. More likely, that's a newer house. It could be this one. But I don't know the address of the house. Now, right, you see across there, that's the Fox River. And basically behind that house was the house of, well, there were some relatives that lived there and they were boarding a young man. Well, he was in his 30s, I think, and he was living there. He was a construction worker and his name was Kauke, last name Kauke. 39 years old, actually, as I recall, and he had this fascination with Beth Ann. He was watching her. Now we're coming around the bend here on the opposite side, and there you see the, the Fox River on the right. It's a cold day here early December, no snow yet. But anyway, this little house on the left here, I think, well, according to the address, I believe it was this house right here, this, call that a salt box, architecturally. Well, it's not exactly a salt box, but it's facsimile, but that is the house, I believe, where they lived. And from there, he hopped through the backyard and we're gonna go to the cemetery. I'll tell you what happened. He attacked her, it was pretty bad. And then he set fire to the house. So we'll head to the cemetery right now and pay our respects to Beth Ann Bosworth. Okay, we are now in Richfield, Illinois. We're at Crystal Lake Memorial Park, just to the west and we're going to visit Beth Ann's grave and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this story here this horrible story Beth Ann was 16 years old and she was very popular she was a cheerleader and all around good kid now it was it was on the night of December 18th of 93, 1993, that this monster, this creepoid, would find Beth Ann. She was babysitting her, her sister's 17-month-old son. Little guy's name was Cody, and is Cody. He's still alive because at around midnight, she was stabbed about 30 times. And thankfully, Cody, Cody would be okay. I'm just going to tell you right up front. Good news there. Now, what happened? 30 stabbings and the perpetrator was so cruel that after he set fire to the house, of course, to cover evidence, now, just imagine, if you will, that, you know, again, murder, okay, really bad. But let's just set fire to the house knowing there's a baby crying, baby boy. I mean, this, this guy's really messed up, right? Well, thank God a neighbor did come. The fire, saw the fire and they did get the baby out as i said now they searched for almost a month police in mchenry county here a stage a wide sweeping search for this killer checking dozens of leads interviewing hundreds of friends family members and other people Everybody was outraged. They could not understand 
you know, the same old story. This couldn't happen in our town. How could this happen? But there was a 39-year-old man named Dale Kauke. Not him, he met with police and he said, oh, there could be a reasonable explanation for this. It's not so outrageous, it's not so out of the norm. I mean, think about it. Now, dummy, when you do that, the police, they look at each other and they're like, what the heck? This guy, something's going on here with this guy. He sounds, sounds like he might know something. But they really couldn't put enough evidence together to really take it much further. And they were still kind of stuck. Stuck until the fingerprints were found, that is. And guess whose fingerprints were found? That's right, Mr. Dale. Mr. Dale was a construction worker and he was living with his family or family friends in the backyard house that we saw behind where Beth Ann was living. Oh no, where Beth Ann was babysitting, her sister's house there. And, you know, they, they had his fingerprints. So they get him back in and they really start putting a squeeze on. And you know what they did that was very interesting? They took him to the cemetery. Where? Right here. Right here. And they made him stand in front of the grave, just like we're standing in front of this grave, this beautiful grave. Look at all the... Christmas is coming up. When you see this, Christmas may have already passed. Well, they took him here and they made him stand right in front of the grave. And they basically guilted him and he like broke down. He wouldn't look, he, he was looking away. He couldn't look at the grave. And finally he broke down and he's like, I did it, I killed that girl. So kind of broke wide open right there. And I see here we have a veteran. Let's pause for the veteran. Jonathan. Jonathan W. Collins. He passed in 2004, 1984 to 2004. Wonder what happened. He's definitely being remembered here. Look at that. That's that's his hat, guys. You know that's his hat. Wow. Thank you for your sacrifice, Jonathan W. Collins. So, what happened? Well, the usual. You get them in and they break him down further and he starts to tell the story. He said that he was drinking with his neighbors and he went to Beth's home. He cut the screen door to gain entry and he attacked her. Now, you gotta figure he was probably making advances on Beth Ann, but she was fighting him off. She successfully fought him off to the extent that she made her way to the bathroom and barricaded her in. She had those 30 stab wounds, she had defensive wounds, she was still alive and she locked herself in there. He probably figured she was gonna die. So let's just burn her, let's burn that house down just to make sure. He said, he told the detectives that 
I killed that girl because I couldn't get her out of the burning house. Of course, he said he discovered the fire. All the lies started coming. No evidence found where the bloody body was found of Beth Ann. And they found his bloody clothes half washed at his home and hair fibers were found on a knife in his house. Whose hair fibers were those? Well, you can guess, Beth Ann's. He plea bargained to escape the death penalty and he got a life term, the usual thing in Illinois. I'm not gonna get into it again and talk about it. But, I mean, he plea bargained his way to get out of the death penalty. And you know, in a case like that, I, I just don't understand. It, it's moot because Governor Ryan and the waived the death penalty and all those guys sitting on death row and he would be anyway too. But you know, when you have a strong case like that, why, why plea bargain? Well, so, you know, weakies, weenies, prosecutor, weenie, or maybe I just want to save money, I don't know. But anyway, he got his sitting there in prison with his glib smile. He died a horrible death of liver cancer. I'm going to walk in between these stones here. The way they're laid out here is they have these little aisles. And the actual locations, the burials, are on this side of the stones. And you'll see here is the stone for... Beth Ann, and I see, ooh, I'm gonna not show her mother's, uh, her mother's birth date is on there. We do not wanna show that. So, we'll focus on loving daughter, Beth A, August 30th, 1977. She was born, and that's Faithful Day, December 18th. 1993. I don't know any more about Beth Ann. I really couldn't find anything. If you know anything about her, please put it in comments. We'd love to hear about her. Other than what I do know, what we do know now. And I'll post it. The wind beneath my wings, it says. The loving daughter, Beth Ann Bosworth, rest in peace.